How you doing? Doing great. Doing good. Enjoying I, isolation. Yeah. Yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> Man, and what was the last show we uh oh, we I think at? it was used. Was it the used? January? It was the used. Yeah. Fuck. It was about that, January. Was a, that was a long time ago. It was yeah. It feels, feels like, like a, it feels like a really long time ago. This is like another life, man. Right. Yeah, it's been time has like changed. Like the flow of time has completely changed. Yeah, like it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't. No. Uh, like I was just talking to another photographer. Uh, the first the first interview, and uh, I had to remember what what was the last show I shot, and it was like in February. Mm-hmm. And then it'll. It has only been two months, but it feels like it's been. It feels like it's been like six months or something. Six months, seven months, yeah. yeah. Like I was thinking, oh shit, it might it might have been 2019, but no, it was two months ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, what have you been working on? Have you been working on anything? Any like cool edits? Any? Um, a few things. Not too much in the realm of photography. Um. I've been last week. I I forced myself to go through like the very first things I ever shot, mm. and try to rework them, and that was that was an interesting afternoon because it was like looking through all the things and like being like, wow, I hate all of this, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like trying to turn it into something that I was like moderately okay with, mm. um, was kind of fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That was bad. <laughs> I yeah. think most of us would say that. No, like, yeah, it has, it's funny. This time has, a, especially for us, like we've talked about it, but like, it, you know, self-reflection. Mm-hmm. And so exactly. a lot of it for me has just been going back to like a lot of the photos that I took from my first year when I started mm-hmm. and man, like all the out of focus mm-hmm. or the, uh, like not knowing how to edit. So like everything, yeah everything has like um a little grain to it and all that Mm -hmm. that i'm just like oh fuck i should have why didn't i know this or why didn't i know that back then yeah so it's like i feel i feel that way especially with um especially with edits i feel like that's like the one thing well not like one of the things would that i i kind of like shoot myself in the foot over when i look back at my old stuff it's like why would i make this look like that you know right yeah. yeah no same here same here and so how long have you been shooting for I, I don't think i um, asked that when we first met yeah uh so it's been three years three years yeah i took it up like my senior year in college hmm. i was like super late to the game um i didn't get into it until way late um yeah, I took like a like a basic photo class and even then I was like sort of into it but not super into it. Um but like I was playing in a band and shit and like following some of these dudes that shoot for bands that I liked and some of the stuff they were doing I was just like hooked. Yeah. Um so I just got I started doing concert stuff mostly for like local groups and local bands and stuff. Um yeah, so it's been like it's been like three years. Mm, yeah, no. Uh, well, I took a, a college course too, not for photography, photography, but for filmmaking. Okay, cool. And I hated it. Like, oh really? I couldn't get into it. And I think I think for us, I I would say is we rather do than learn. And mm-hmm. like yeah, one hundred percent. A lot of the learning just comes from you doing know, doing it and failing. Yeah. So like I think I think that's what it was for me because once I picked up a camera like then that forced me to learn about like aperture f stop mm-hmm. all that stuff, but reading about it I I just never got it because like I didn't have a tangible thing to work with. Yeah, I would say that too because like, uh, I would say I've more learned more, like just shooting, than anyone could have ever taught me in a classroom. Yeah. Um. Uh, when it comes to editing, there's definitely some things that I learned, like, you know, I mean, like, you know, like, YouTube tutorials are, like, a godsend in terms of, like, you know, whatever weird thing you want to learn that you have no idea how it works within whatever, you you know, whether you're using Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever. 
like there's definitely like things you can learn off the internet but like no one could have taught me the things that I've done or like a way had I not just like gone out a million times and sucked at it until I realized like no this is how you do it yeah and have you have you only done concert photography have you um that a little bit I would like to so it's it's complicated I I really have not done much in terms of the like things that the majority of photographers do like portraits weddings like couple sessions all those like you know senior photography all those things I really have not done much um I I would be into it but I haven't had like too much like opportunity uh to work on it I was uh I was starting to book some things to try to get into it and then the pandemic hit so uh when it's over um I'm talking to some of those people and we're still gonna get that going afterwards um which I'm definitely excited about um and I'm also attempting to branch towards real estate photography Mm. um I I'm at a weird place where, I mean, you know, as much as, as much as I do this, this, this on a local level, there's basically zero income off concerts. Yeah. If you're trying to shoot concerts, you can make like a a buck here and there off a local band or, you know, selling your shots to whatever, but for the major, for the most part in comparison to other realms of photography, there's not much to be made off concerts unless you can actually book a tour. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to branch towards real estate as a as a way to kind of make money. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 No. Uh, I mean, I was the same too. Like, uh, I had to start doing videography mm-hmm. just so people would hire me for stuff, and then mm-hmm. I would kind of slip in. I was like, oh yeah, like, by hey. the way, I also do photos. So like, by the way. So then I had to hire my friend to do um, drone footage. So oh, cool. That, so that yeah. I could do the photography for like an hour. He gets drone footage and then I use my cameras for footage too. But like, yeah, it's been, um, I've either worked with like, um, like organizations or, uh, charities mm-hmm. for that. And, yeah. uh, unfortunately, yeah, because of the pandemic, I lost a, a significant amount of income, <laughs> you know, like, I think everyone's feeling that right now. Like, yeah like two or three days of uh work mm, maybe like eight hours each mm-hmm. i would i would have earned like about just over a thousand dollars just you know yep yeah and it takes what what does it take usually if you have like a normal job like three months for like a thousand dollars so it's like i was like in two days i could have made that money but yeah right but yeah i feel that yeah and so like what kind what kind of like um other like other mediums are you trying to work with because like like mm-hmm. for me i started with concerts and mm-hmm. i was like well i wonder what it, like i was was like wonder what it'd be like to shoot with people and so i started with a friend and then you kind of work up yeah to, like, you kind of branch out and that kind of stuff yeah and so like, um yeah is that something you're, you you want to try or like um yeah so that's kind of like, in terms of like the uh, moving towards doing like people, people, whatever, yeah. modeling or whatever. Uh, I've also been, you know, mostly talking out with some friends um, and one or two people that I know they're like friends of friends that like have done modeling shoots before. Um, so like, yeah. Um, in terms of like what I already work with, um, I actually started in videography. Um, I back when I was in school, I was working for the marketing department as a videographer. Um, so I, I mean, you, you could say that I shot videos before I shot photos. I think I had a camera in my hand for like four or five months before I actually like actually shot photos Yeah. in any capacity. Um, we were kind of spoiled. My first camera was a, a 5D Mark III, <laughs> but it wasn't my camera. I just got to use it. Yeah. No. Uh, and then I had to, when I when I finally bought my own camera, it was a, it was a big step down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say so. Like, kind of like you, because I was taking uh, film classes. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to work with like film and stuff, like like um, like the digital uh, camcorders and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I got you. I got you. And uh, I, I told the story out with the other interview, but I'll tell it. I'll tell it again. But like, I was working on um, like a web series with my friend. Cool. Like a short web series, and yeah. he had he had the Canon 5D Mark III. Nice. So we we worked with that, but he gave me like the the what was it the Rebel T3i or something like that. Mm-hmm. He's like here. My first, shoot. my first, I had the T5i. Yeah, he's like he's like here, shoot some behind this behind the scenes. I was like okay, yeah. so that's what kind of got me into the to just shooting video. Mm-hmm. Besides just films, it was just kind of getting like behind the scenes because I think that for me is what I like. It's just kind of yeah, um, not scripted. Like I just love moving around with the yeah. camera, getting getting anything really. And then um, somewhere around mid-production, I was just like, I'm going to buy a camera and just like record everything, take pictures. Yeah. And I got the 70D and people were like, it's a crop sensor. You're not going to like it. It's really hard to work with. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck it. Like, I'll be the, I'll be the best with this camera then. Like, yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's like, I can't afford a, a 5D right now. So I was yeah, like, no. just, I'll just use this and I've, I, I've used it ever since last December. Mm-hmm. And like, anytime people ask me like, what camera do you use or what lens do you use? I was like, dude, I'm using the kit lens and the 70 D. So like, I'm like, everything's working against me, but mm-hmm. I somehow still get like pretty decent shots. And so far I, I haven't had the need to upgrade, but I got, yeah. a, I got a yeah. mark for, yeah. I think, uh, like, the more and more I've learned about cameras, the more and more I've come to realize that, like, uh, within the realm of the majority of types of photography, what you're really using doesn't matter too much as long as you know what you're doing with it. Um, And, you know, you see those YouTube videos of, like, you know, where they're, like, they give a pro photographer a crappy camera, and they give a new photographer a pro camera, and they see who gets better results. And the pro obviously always gets better results with the crappy camera because they know what they're doing with it. Right. Um, And, like, so, like, there's nothing wrong with shooting with a 70D if that's the camera that you like. Uh, I think the only time that I think there is a big difference is – with concerts um less so when we shoot at places like Delmarha and the pageant but those local venues like fubar or like pops or ready room or the smaller even than those ones venues but they don't really have as much light um like when i see someone in there with like you know like a rebel t3i and a kit lens i kind of cringe just a little bit because like I feel like you need at the very minimum like like a like even the cheap nifty fifty uh it just it doesn't take in enough light you know yeah with those with the with like especially with the crop frame or the um the kit lens where it's it goes you know when you zoom in it goes to like what is it five six or some shit like that (laughs) it just it's not enough light for how little light is in the room and the shots always come out like the grainiest things you've ever seen um and just a little investment in a prime lens you know because they're like you can get them used for like uh, like 90 dollars yeah which is so cheap that like if you're serious about doing concerts i feel like you need at least that but for the most part like what camera you're using really doesn't matter as long as you're happy with the results that you're putting out with it. Yeah. 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 That's basically like, uh, verbatim. What I said was like, like a yeah. lot of, a lot of people, like I'll get like photographers that randomly message me. It's like, Oh, what camera should I use? And I'm like, it doesn't Whatever really you matter. Want, man. Yeah. Whatever you want. And it like, it's all up to you, man. I think, um, I think for video it matters a little more. Video does photos, matter, yeah. Photos, photos specifically. I'm like, if it takes a decent photo, it takes a decent photo. Like, my dad wanted a like a camera. I guess he was. I don't know. He he's he's like doing you know, um, you know, just hobbyist photography for years. And he was looking at getting a new camera, and he kept sending me ones, and I keep being just like, 
for what you do, all of these are fine. Like, you're not, he doesn't, he doesn't do like corporate photography. He's not like trying to make money off his camera. He's trying to just trying to like take a few cool pictures when he's out hiking and stuff like that. Right. It's like the majority of cameras nowadays achieve results that are fantastic in comparison to where we were even like five or 10 years ago. Yeah. And even like, uh, like even now smartphones are doing really good photos too. Like if you've seen like the Google pixel or some of the new iPhones. Um, so it's really like whenever people like ask me like, well, Oh, like what camera should I use? It's like, unless you're trying to do concerts, it doesn't matter if you're trying to do concerts it matters like a tiny bit and if it, you're trying to do videos it matters a tiny bit but other than that if you're just trying to shoot some photos with your friends it doesn't matter like right yeah no like uh what was it I'm trying to think because people always ask me like what's better canon nikon sony i'm like i've only ever worked with canon so i can't i can't really <laughs> yeah. speak about nikon or sony I'm like, yeah. if you, if you want to try Sony, you can, like, I, like, I'm not I, complaining. Yeah. Like I'm not complaining. Like if there are people that have told me like Sony probably better for uh video Nikon. For yeah. For now can't uh, Nikon <laughs> people have said it's better for uh, photography and a little bit most of video. Of the people I know most of the people I know that shoot Nikon, like the colors better. Yeah. And I will say that I've never, I've, I don't think I've ever shot a Nikon camera, but the people I know that shoot on a Nikon, I feel like they get just naturally better colors than me. And I'm always like just a tiny bit jealous. Mm. Yeah. No, I usually, I just, I just work with that on, on, on Lightroom. Like I just edit, mm. I just, yeah. fuck, I just fuck around with edits. Same. And cause of that, cause like, even like some of the photos that I take, and I look at the at the back of the screen to see how, like how they turned out. I love them, but I know the second I get into Lightroom, I'm just gonna fuck around with it, and it's not mm -hmm. gonna look the same way. So it's like I I don't even I I don't I don't get worked up as I used to about lights or not yeah. lighting, but like the colors. Color. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, I think for non concert work, uh, it it you know, like the better color or whatever that people say Nikon has might matter just a little bit in that you might have to work and edit a little less. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it might like, it might make it so that you look at the photo and only have to touch it a tiny bit to get it where you want it to be. But I think with concerts, I think one of the things I love about concerts is especially once you really deep dive into your editing software you can make your concert shots look entirely different than the way they were shot. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, I, especially with one of the things I've loved noticing is especially with some of the crazy light shows. Um, there's a band I shot at the pageant in October. I don't know if you've heard of periphery. Mm. Um, they're like a metal band. They have a crazy light show. Um, and I I pretty much just had to shoot in burst constantly because their lights were so crazy that like if I lined up the perfect shot and just snapped it there's like a 40% chance that all of a sudden the stage was just black for like a microsecond because yeah. of the crazy light show and so I would just like I think I shot like you know we had our our, our three song it was like 15 minutes I think I shot 1500 photos because I was just like, bur I was just constantly shooting in first trying to yeah. hope I got something. Cause it was like, but the thing that I loved so much about editing that show was the fact that um, one thing that I think is really cool is like, I don't know if you've noticed this with some of the shows you've edited, like when you're doing like color sliders and stuff and adjusting color bounces and stuff, sometimes the lights that are, not very you know like you may see a little little light you know if it's a yellow light when you bring up the yellow all of a sudden that light there was just like a little bit because like you know it all of a sudden it extends off the entire stage because like the um the yellow light was there the whole time in the information of the photo but you don't really necessarily see it until you bring it up in the editing software yeah so you can it's kind of it's kind of crazy you can almost you can almost change the way that the lights were 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost, just like a little bit. Just a little bit. Just like a I, little bit, not a ton, but. I, I've noticed that too with like stage lights, like, you know, like the, like that spotlight. Mm-hmm. Some yep. bands don't like the harshness, so they like, I don't know, they got like a diffuser, I guess, for those lights. Yeah. And so like when you shoot it, it looks super low, low, low mm-hmm. lighting. Like you think you can't do anything with it. I go in a light room and I like turn it up and it changes the whole mood of that picture. Yeah. Yep. So like mm-hmm. what you saw in concert was probably like very low lighting. You could probably barely make out the, mm-hmm. the the singer. But when you play with it in Lightroom, like you can see him fully. You have to maybe you have to work with the making sure that the um, the graininess isn't there. So you have to kind of play with that as well. Yeah. But for the most part, yeah, you can change the whole mood of uh like of a, of a concert too just by looking at the photos mm-hmm. like it's like i don't remember that at the show yeah. and like because like i have a lot of friends that go to these concerts too and they're like i don't remember that i'm like, <laughs> dude. like <laughs> it's like dude it's like editing <laughs> that's the thing yeah i think that i love about concerts is like especially there's some of those i don't know how i don't know like who you follow or not but like especially some of those photographers that truly like man they make it like an art like yeah. some of the concert like especially once you get involved with like prisms and stuff i've tried to do a little bit of that stuff and i've tried to get like man all the more like creative stuff that i've done has like it's copying but it's not copying you know what i mean like yeah like, seeing photographers that i love and they do something really cool and i'm like oh my god i have to go out and do that and then the next like the next concert i go and shoot i try to like copy that style and try to like uh try to do something similar to what they did because it just like some of those people just like push the realm i feel like of what you can do man you get there's some people that do some crazy ass stuff yeah like i always i always think because i think there's some people who are really great at taking the photos Mm -hmm. and then there's some people who are like just really great at editing Mm-hmm. So like I don't know I don't know if you follow, yeah I would agree with that yeah I don't know if you follow Brandon Wolfel I think his name is I think so is he low he's local right uh no he's uh, I think he's no. in the New York based. okay I want to probably think I'm probably thinking of a different person then yeah I uh, I'll have to like send you his Instagram page okay. but, like like he takes really good photos and I think he's a great photographer but but like a lot of his I think his success comes from the editing his editing, his editing. style yeah. Like, I think There's, if he had taken those same photos and didn't have the as good of a editing mind, I guess, mm-hmm. I don't think he'd be as successful as he is right now. I think all of his success is through the editing. Yeah. And there's a um, there's a local photographer. Um, she's shot at the pageant a few times with me. Uh, her name's Alyssa Schwalm. Um, her oh. Instagram is that's when I snapped dot photos okay um and holy crap her edits every time blow my mind Mm -hmm. uh like she does like you know like there was a show um i think it was i think it was kayflay and meg myers um which was where i met her and where i started following her and her shots came out great and then i started following her other work holy crap like she does these weird ass things with colors uh that every time she puts something out i'm just like wow this person can edit way better than i can yeah no i'm I'm looking at the stuff right now Mm -hmm. it's like yeah i guess yeah she's got like this neon kind of yeah if you uh if you scroll down a little bit you can see um like a little flower section where she went to the botanical gardens and did these weird like almost like sci-fi color edits of some of the plants there and i was just like how i i i to this day i still i have no idea how she did it you know what i mean like i if i tried to replicate her photo i couldn't no i straight up couldn't i'm trying to look at it my guess and this is just a wild guess but for the plants, I would say she probably took like a portable light with mm. uh, with the interchangeable like colors. Mm. 
that's possible. That's my guess. I don't know. It, I don't know. So yeah, it's, 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 we may well. never know unless we ask. We gotta ask them. We gotta DM. Uh, we gotta, like, <laughs> it's like I'm gonna DM. Be like, hey, come on the show. Let's talk. I want to know. Yeah, she's she's really great. She's really cool. Um, I think I've ever met her. You have or haven't? I don't think I have. No, she's around. She mostly does like. Uh, I think her mostly her scene is kind of like electronic music. A lot of her shots are like DJs and electronic sets and stuff like that. Mm, okay. um, which is uh, not not the scene that I've been photographing for the yeah. most part. Well, I think um, if, you, if you do DJs, I don't think you go for the DJs themselves. I think mostly you go for the light. The light oh, stuff. yeah, of course. Those Those yeah. things are always about the lights, man. They always have crazy crazy light shows yeah because like any any uh like dj shots that i see are like all like from the back like you mm-hmm. see the whole usually stage. from the back usually from yeah. the back or like close up yeah but never never like specifically about the dj unless it's like i don't even know a famous dj right now uh I don't know a popular one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, follow enough. Like, like, I don't follow. Music. Yeah, I don't follow enough to, to really to really care. Yeah. You know? But I'm sure there's some pretty good ones out there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it can't be that hard. <laughs> but uh, uh, but how, do you have any like uh, any conscious stories? You need like any like bad or good conscious stories? Bad. I'm not too many bad. I have mostly my like quote-unquote bad would be like mostly just shows where i'm disappointed in what i got Mm. um there were a few in like last december i was shooting a ton of shows at the pageant in delmar hall um i pretty much just i reached out to the my my person and i pretty much put in a request for every point fest show and there were some of them ones where I just went in really excited and the lighting was just something that I had a hard time working with. Um, yeah. Highly Suspect, Angels and Airwaves, Dirty Heads, and uh, the Meg Myers K-Fly show as well. All four of those shows, like, the artists did great. The music was great. I'm never going to knock those artists because, like, they did a great job. Like, the show was great. If I had been there to just see the show, I would have had a great time. Um, I think it was, like, I think they were just too backlit. Um, Dirty Heads and Highly Suspect as well. Me and um, me and Rima. You know Rima? Yeah, you know yeah, Rima. Yeah, I know Rima. Me and Rima both walked off the moment it was over and kind of looked at each other like... Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, and I was just like... I was just like, I don't feel like I got anything noteworthy. And she was like, I don't. I She was like, I have some that, like, obviously, like, I was able to save a few with edits. Um, but, it, like, I look back at the whole set and I'm like, eh, yeah, just, I don't feel like I did well. Um, so, yeah, same here. Well, I was at the um, uh, Holly Suspect one. Like, I shot yes. that. Yeah, and, I think I saw you there. And, like, I got a couple good ones, but, like, it was yeah. – it was rough like it was too backlit it was so backlit there wasn't enough foreground light and i think it's really interesting um one of my buddies um i actually so i don't actually know if i've told you this i actually work at the pattern in delmar hall Mm. um i they don't pay me to be a photographer obviously um no one no one gets paid (laughs) i mean you know it is uh i'm a stagehand um but one of my buddies alex um uh was one of the light guys for Delmar Hall um and we've had some really inter- interesting conversations about like what light conditions make for the best photography and what light you, like th- things things that like things that we as photographers hate versus um ty- different types of light shows and one of the things that we've talked about w- was like any kind of li- any kind of show where it's just super backlit is so difficult to shoot especially if there's no front light like it's just like i guess you can get kind of like edgy moody shots sort of you can get like that cool creative like backlit 
they illuminate it, especially if there's smoke. Smoke helps a little bit, I think, sometimes with making the lights look cool. But yeah, in terms of like getting a good shot of the artist, it's so difficult. Like that, that like the highly suspect show, the dirty heads show, that were all just so backlit that like I saved a few things, but um, I just didn't feel that great about anything that I shot. Hmm. And what about your favorite? Like what? Like. What was like your absolute? Like I have somewhere. <laughs> like I, I have a few. I have like, a few. Yeah, because like I never like so. I want to give you mine real quick. Let me okay. see if I got it. But like, so what was it? Coin had no idea what their uh, lighting situation was gonna be like, and I was like, I like their music, but I was I was told that like their they were like um their lighting situation wasn't always that great. So I was like, fuck. All right. Mm, yeah. So I went in with low expectations, came out <laughs> super happy. Right. Like, yeah. I would, like I could, I could actually get shots of the drummer well lit. So like, mm-hmm. I have like a ton of shots of the drummer, which I never get. Cause they're probably the toughest to photograph just cause they're the always, ones. They're so, so far back. <laughs> Far back, never well lit. I'm like, yeah, always, I feel, I feel always. bad turning in photos without drummers in them because it's like, I couldn't get them. Like, maybe do better lighting next time. I don't know. The only good drummer photos I've ever gotten were local bands where I got, I like, I was working for the band, yeah, like being paid to be there. And I, like, you know, when I showed up, I was like, hey, is it cool if I hop on stage for a second and get photos of your drummer? And they were like, yeah, sure, go for it. Yeah. Um, I have like a, I have an 18 millimeter um, prime 2.8 uh, wide lens. And it, I've, man, it's so much fun. It's so the wide angle lens, if you get the right framing of like close up of them with the drum set, so cool. Which is why whenever like, whenever we go, you know, whenever we're shooting in the pit at the pageant, and there's that dude that works for the band and he's running around on stage. I'm like, I hate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I hate. But I like I was It's a jealous hate because that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a jealous hate. Yeah, because uh touring's the dream for me, but I mean that's like I yeah. feel like once I accomplish that, like I don't care what tour. Like yep. I don't I don't care if it's uh, like a an east coast tour a west coast, or a nationwide tour or whatever i'm like all right i will go anywhere with anyone <laughs> exactly it's like i'll do i'll drive if i have i'll to. do oh yeah uh yep yeah i think yeah. we agree on basically that yeah but, but uh, uh no see, it's good shows there's a few uh there was a show i shot last december at the pageant um it was steel panther Hmm. which well that was an interesting show but their opener was this band called stitched up heart never heard of them there were some metal band i'd never heard of them holy shit i could not have been happier with the shots that i got that of that band uh yeah they just like they were one of those bands that like you can tell when the bands know it's the first three songs of there's photographers and they like interact with you. Yeah. I love those bands. I love those bands. They're the greatest. Cause they, they like, they, I don't know. They just like, they know that like what we're doing, it helps their publicity in a way, like be it through the internet or through, you know, if we give them, if, you know, if it's a band where, you know, they have our shots or whatever, like they know to play into that yeah um they were one of those female fronted metal bands um and she just got like right up close and personal with my camera when she shot when she saw me she like clearly pointing my camera at her and she just got right up and personal and it was just like it was it was like fuck yeah like uh yeah it was really good um and then most recently uh i shot i went all the way out to springfield on the last night where concerts were allowed Mm. this was march i think it was like the 18th um so february i'm losing track of time now yeah um whatever it was like the last it was like the last legal show uh it was it was a it was a 
four metal bands, um, Greyhaven, Invent Animate, Currents, and the headliner was Silent Planet. And man, it was like anyone and everyone that was a metalhead showed up because they knew it was like the last concert for God knows how long. Right. And it was just insane. Mm. Like absolutely the craziest concert I've ever been to. And uh, I, I had a buddy who knew the promoter. So he got me a photo pass. Um, man, so many, like so many cool shots, but also I, um, I started shooting video and I put together like a minute and a half little video of some of the craziness that was going on. And it's just like, it's one of those shows you just walk away and you're just like, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I get it, man. It's crazy. Yeah. No, I don't think I've been to a show like that. And let me see in a while, like if I had to think super hard on it, might have been the uh, last time I saw Lincoln Park live. Was all right. Like, <laughs> that would be a while ago. Like six years ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, like uh, and maybe it was just because I I went. It was my first time seeing them, but like I like I walked out of and it was Chicago too. So like I just walked out of the amphitheater just like super happy, pumped up. I was like, mm -hmm. it's like I get to do it again the next night in Detroit. So it's like <laughs> that's awesome. So it was one of those, yeah, maybe it was just like the band itself too, but like, and I wasn't even shooting back then. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe if I had been a photographer, I probably still would have been happy because like the lighting for all the bands, top yeah. notch. So yeah. like, I, I probably would have been happy with, with the photos, but have you shot at the amphitheater yet? I have not shot at either the amphitheater or any of the stadiums. I'm still, uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty fortunate that the pageant in Dumber Hall let me shoot whenever I want. Um, but yeah, I'm, I still have not bridged that. I haven't shot for publication or anything like that, so um, I still haven't made that step up. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I haven't shot at the, any of the stadiums either, just the amphitheater. Mm -hmm. Just the amphitheater. Yeah, I've wanted to shoot out there. Nah, but like, like this was the summer though. Like, I was ready. Like, I had all my like stuff coordinated mm -hmm. i had all mm -hmm. my emails ready to go out and fucking pandemic just ruined my 2020 yep. Yep. you know it's like god damn like i had everything lined up you know this is gonna be my year finally gonna do the stadium shows which i was hesitant to because sometimes um from what i've heard you either are allowed in the photo pit or you're you're sent all the way to the back with the sound. Yep, it's is. soundboard shoots. Yeah. Soundboard shoots, and I'm like, oh, I've done that with the pageant, and I hate it. It's like shooting, oh. man. Shooting. I still don't have a telephoto lens, and shoot anytime they're like, they're like, yeah, you can shoot from the crowd. I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, no. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was like that. I'm I'm getting one very soon, and I'm very excited about. It. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna use a stimulus check, man. I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna use it to it's, buy some. It's funny, the one. Um, <clears throat> so I shoot Sony, um, and the only telephoto for Sony right now is the Sony brand one, and it is twenty six hundred dollars. The fuck? Yeah, it's it's stupid, but uh, I've been excited this for about six months because about six months ago tamron announced they were making one and i already have tamron's 28 to 75 uh 2.8 and it's fantastic it's really great lens and they just did the final release announcement and it's coming out mid-may so i pre-ordered it and it's only gonna be it's it's exactly twelve hundred dollars it's mm. it's it, it is my stimulus check <laughs> uh it's crazy. Uh, it's uh, here. I'll just one second. It's about the same size as my. This is my. I don't know if you can see. This is my. Yeah. Twenty-eight to seventy-five. 
Mm. It is like if this is the twenty to seventy five, it's like that mm. okay, and it's like uh, in comparison to like the Canon, you know, I mean, you you know the classic Canon seventy two hundred. It's it's almost half the size and weight mm. of what you usually because usually you see like telephoto lens it's like that big yeah they're like four pounds yeah no, they're like no. four pounds they're, they're heavy every time i see Rima with her her 5d and her two to 70 to 25 on it my back hurts like for her a little <laughs> bit i'm yeah. always like oh that must suck so much no i but, don't I, I haven't fucked around with telephoto lens yet and I've gotten some pretty good results, you know? So mm. I'm like, I'm like, until I need it, I absolutely need it. I'll probably mm. hold out or. It's one of those things where like, I don't think for the majority of shows, I don't think you necessarily need it quote, so much. Yeah. But it's definitely one of those things where I think about like, I think about what I want to do someday. And it's something that I know I'll need in my arsenal by then. Yeah. So with Tamron releasing that and it's like half the price of the Sony one, I was like, I'm just going to get this now because, you know, even if I don't get to use it that much in the next six months or three months or two months or whatever until things open again. And even if, you know, when everything goes back, I don't even use it that much on my concert shoots. It's something that like, I know I will need someday. Right. Um, Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of my thought on it. No, I get it. Yeah. Like, like I'm trying to think of like all the things that I, I will probably need, and it's like I'm I need to get an 80 millimeter. I'm uh I ordered a 30 a 35 millimeter uh prime lens. Like a prime, so, like yeah. one of the the which one? The, like the Sigma or? Shit, I'm gonna have to look at it again. Yeah. It's, like it's been a while. Like the the order yeah, got yeah, delayed, yeah. which is like. Oh yeah yeah yeah. There's been a lot of that. That pissed me off. So like, I forgot what the fuck I even ordered. But like, I was <laughs> I was excited, and then they're like, "Oh, your shipment is delayed, but we'll notify you when, blah blah blah." And it's been like a week or two now. But mm-hmm. um, I think it's Sigma. Yeah, it's a uh, really good lens. Yeah, and so now I'm just waiting for that shit. And um, do you have uh, do you have to convert your like if you have any other lens? Do you have to convert it with your Sony? Or do you have like? I don't have any. I have also. Uh... I have all of my lens are are built for Sony. Built for um, Sony, okay. Yeah, when I did the switch, um, I really didn't have that much invested in my Canon stuff. Um, so this was about a year ago now, actually. Uh, I had the T5i. I had like a fifty. I think I had like a twenty-four millimeter prime, and. <clears throat> I really didn't have that much invested in it and my uh my camera body and 50 mil got stolen um <clears throat> and i was already looking at switching to sony but being completely cameraless i kind of had to get something yeah and so i i just i just made the decision right there i was like if i'm gonna make this change i'm just gonna make it now um and i just sold off like the three lenses i think that i still had on it and got like i don't know like 200 bucks for 300 bucks back i think yeah um but i knew that i wanted to make the change um before i had too much invested in canon gear and i know a lot of people that you know talk about changing platforms they're like man but i just you know i have five thousand dollars in lenses and all that stuff and it's like that's why i completely understand people that you know like they're like they're like i can't change i'm too invested in this platform it's like i get it like uh i just i got lucky well unlucky i guess because i had something stolen but you know yeah the timing was right to just do it right yeah um yeah 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 no i get it i mean i mean i never had the inkling to uh to switch it up like i like i kind of like just read all the stuff i needed to on two i was like uh, I was like, I don't think I'll need Sony. And then I read Nikon. I was like, ah, eh, fuck Nikon. If you if you're <laughs> already in something and you already like what you're doing, there's no reason like despite all the internet wars over who's better, like Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like all three brands all all of the camera brands do decent work for what they are. And really it just comes down to what you're looking for. Like 
they all have their advantages and disadvantages, but at the end of the day, it doesn't, <clears throat> at least for photos, you can make good looking photos on with and on any of those on the, any of those platforms. So if you like your Canon, there's no reason not to keep using Canon. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so that's why I haven't switched. I was like, no, it's <laughs> like, I don't need Sony. I don't need Nikon, but I don't know. Like sometimes like I get, uh, I don't know if you've ever done it, but like I get curious with, uh, with my iPhone just to see like, if I can take as good of photos with it. So like I'll walk around trying to take photos and, mm -hmm. and I'll edit them as much as I can just to see if I can fool people into thinking that uh, I, took into with, thinking, yeah. I took it with a pro camera That's funny. and, and, may, and like, I, I, I never show photographers cause I, like, I don't hang out with photographers. All yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. So like a normal person's like, oh, I go, well, yeah, that looks like you took it with with your Canon. I was like, no, Canon. I took it with my phone. That's dude. my phone. That's my iPhone. Yeah, That's my iPhone, dude. But like, I still have an old phone, so my my um my phone camera is not great. But um, yeah, definitely some of the newer phone cameras. As long as you're not trying to shoot a concert, I would I would say you could fake it in very few. I think I think photographers I think were some of the only people that would notice. I think the majority of people would look at it and be like, "Yeah, that looks totally pro," yeah. and be like, "Yeah." No, mm -hmm. like I took one photo with uh, ah uh, shit, what was it? Can't my iPhone seven maybe? Okay, maybe seven, maybe or. Or maybe my ten. I can't remember what it was. I think it was thirty seconds to Mars, and I just took like a wide shot, and like I fooled a bunch of people into thinking that I shot. Yeah, so like, awesome. I think Rima was there. And she's yeah. like, she's like, when did you get this shot? And I was like, oh, it's my phone. Like I just, <laughs> like I didn't even. I wasn't shooting. I was just, it was just my phone. That's fucking great. But it was just one photo, and the yeah. rest, the rest, you know, blurry yeah. or like overblown. So I was mm -hmm. like. So I was just like sticking to that one photo being like, oh yeah, like I, my one, <laughs> my one great shot. That's awesome. <laughs> nah, man. But, um, so what are you, what are you doing now with photography? Like, uh, cause I, right now, like right now in quarantine, not much. <laughs> uh, well, like, okay. Not right now, right now, but like, I, like I could have sworn I saw you like, um, when I was on Instagram a couple months back, like you were like traveling a little bit with with it oh yeah so well i had a job i had a job ah. um so back in february um i landed a kind of like a it's more of a contract really um uh doing dance photography um dance photography. so they were like <clears throat> they're like this is dance competitions they're like um like kids like 10 through 20 roughly um doing it's like you know like school dance whatever competitions yeah. um across the u.s mostly midwest but like pretty much everywhere from like here and as west as like i think we had one we were supposed to do that was in arizona but um so yeah it was like it was uh traveling for that um it would be it would be like travel you know, out to Dallas or whatever was one of the ones we did, you know, drive all the way down there, set up all our stuff. And then we'd have like three days of shooting um, both. We would have, so it was like kind of, kind of a team. We would have, um, we would rotate between three positions. We would have someone taking photos. We'd have someone doing the videos and then we'd have someone uh, helping out with the sales. It's one of, it was one of those things where like you could buy photos Mm, okay um, like on point on but it was we're selling to dance moms you know yeah um it was all right um definitely different i didn't i didn't like the fact that there was no editing involved because it's totally like a 180 from what i'm used to i'm used to the like go out and shoot something spend time like making it mine like making it my photography with editing and then putting it out on the internet whereas this yeah. is just like I shoot a photo and it's tethered and it goes straight to the computer and someone downstairs is trying to buy it. And mm. I don't know. It's, 
it was good money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it was fun to travel. Uh, I got to see, I got to do four weeks of it. There was supposed to be 13. Um, so we had a ton of weeks canceled. Um, so I got to go to Dallas, Colorado Springs, Kalamazoo, Michigan, and Branson, Missouri. It was fun. It was four weeks. It was a lot of work. Um, I was still working. I, I, I was still working at the pageant in Dumber Hall on the days I was in town because I need that. I, I need a steady job too. So it was like, it was like leave on a Thursday, travel all day, work literally like 40 hours between Friday and Saturday and Sunday like just literally all day work yeah and then drive back on monday work at the pageant domer hall on tuesday and wednesday and then drive back out again on thursday it was just like no rest <laughs> ever yeah uh it was it was one of those things where it's like you're so busy that you're just like constantly tired but you feel really good about it you know mm, yeah um but then, you know, obviously everything got canceled. So um, I've talked to them and uh, they did a yearly thing for them. It's like every spring. So I'll do it again next spring. Um, but it was, it was fun to take a few trips, I guess. I would have liked to do more, but yeah, <laughs> uh, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And pandemics, man. Pandemic hits. You know? Pandemic hits. We can't control it. No, nope. <laughs> uh, like I don't, I don't think I've ever done. Well, be okay. So I, that's a lie. When I've done the uh, the charity stuff, there's not a whole lot of like, like I have to take myself out of it and be like, okay, I'm not editing my style. I'm making sure that this is for them. This is this what is, they want. Yeah. So like, yeah. I think the hardest part for me was like when I had to do their video stuff and uh, the. Um, the, like the the head person in charge was always giving me notes and stuff i was mm -hmm. like i was like trust me like in my mind i'm saying trust me i know what i'm doing yes. yeah you're gonna get the best product out of this i've definitely had that with video stuff um i actually had man i learned the hard way to limit like you gotta write in the contract like the amount of edits they can make you re-edit on video things like, um, so I have a buddy, um, his name's Vince and he's, uh, he makes me look horrible at videos. Oh my God. Like, uh, he, I went to school with him. Um, and then he moved out to LA. He's been doing like, um, he's been doing like corporate, like corporate contracts for videos shooting with like, he's got like, he's getting a cinema camera soon, like mm. soon, like, and he's been doing um, production assistant stuff on like TV sets and stuff like that, trying to like get bigger because he wants to be like a cinematographer sometime, someday. Yeah. And he was telling me, he was like, when it comes to editing, he's like, if, when you take a contract, you have to write in how many re-edits they can give you and base it off how much they're going to pay you. He was like, He's like, if I take you a video contract and it's like above four grand, I'm going to make more than four grand off the video. I'll give them like way more leniency because like I'm, they're making, they're making me four grand. If they want me to re-edit it 10 times, I'll deal with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he was like, if I, if I'm working something for someone and they're only going to pay me five or $600 and it's going to be something that I could do, like, he's like, if, first of all, if I'm taking it, it's something I think I can do really quickly and I can make a quick buck. Like it might not be as much as money as the $4,000, but the thing that's going to make me $4,000 may take me an entire work week to do like 40 or 50 hours to do. Whereas this thing I've taken that I've agreed to take for five or $600, it's because I think I can do it in eight hours, you know? Like, I think I can do it in four hours or 10 hours or whatever that smaller increment of time is. And so he was telling me, he was like, if you're taking like, like you have to base it based off what you think you're making, but like write in how many times it can give you notes. So for instance, he'll be like, I'll, I'll do my first edit and I'll give it to them. And if it's a cheap contract, I tell them that they have to give me all of their things that they want me to re-edit on one 
note right there. Like, and it can be, it can be five things. It can be 10 things. It could be 20 things, but they had to tell me right then and there what they want to change so that when I go and change all those things and I make it to what they want, that's it. They're done. That's what they get. You know what I mean? Like you have to have that, like, uh, like, I want to say self-respect is the way, right way to put it is like valuing your own time Yeah, is like, like being able to like, uh, do everything they want and make all the changes that they want, but you can't let them drag it out. And I ran into this. The reason you're telling me this, I had a video contract I was doing for a band. This was like two years ago. It was basically just like a live, um, kind of like a live promo ish. Like we recorded live audio we recorded and I, I did like three different cameras. I had like two that I set up and then I ran around with another one doing like a live promo. It was like five or six minutes, like a five or six minute video. Um, but we bounced back and forth like 10 times. I think I edited that video like so, like so many hours. Like I think it was like three extra weeks worth of my work to make things the way they wanted to just because I had been stupid enough not to write in how many re-edits they could make me do. And it was like, it was the kind of deal where it was like, I think this is good. I think you should just take it. And they were like, we kind of don't want to pay you unless you make it the way it's done. Like, and so now I'm forced to, you know, do everything they want. And like, I, I watched my first video and I watched the final video that they, we eventually set it on and they were like sort of happy with it was so much worse. They should have just listened to what I wanted. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm being, I'm being real. Like there were some older people, they were like kind of older people. And it's one of those things where it's just like, now that it's over, I never want to work with them ever again. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things you, I think you just, it's, it's one of those things you got to learn, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. No, I'm always uh, like, I think for me, anytime I do video work, I always tell um, uh, I don't know who I said this to. I forgot. I think it was the guy that I did the, I did like a golf tournament for them. Okay. And I was like, I told them because he like invited me to like this cookout the, the night before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was, I was like talking to him. I was like, hey, so if you wanna, if you want someone to to be your bitch, you can get a wedding photographer. You can get like a wedding videographer. <laughs> That's hilarious. Because they'll they'll fucking run around for you. They'll yeah. Like they're they're there. I'm like, and I bet yeah. you. I mean, they probably have their own contracts too. But they're yeah. like, I've seen like the way people treat the videographers, and they're like, I'm like, if you want someone like that, get a get a wedding videographer who's like willing to go the extra mile for little to no uh, what's extra the word? Money. Yeah. And I was like, or you can trust me. And like, I know, I like, I was like, just by, you know, just by talking to them, I was like, I know what you probably want and I'm willing to work with you just yeah. as long as like, we're both like yeah. sinking, like we're both just, yeah, you know. And yeah. so I was just like, if that's, if that's what you want, like, just let me do my thing. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and even then I like, he probably had like very small, um suggestions and yeah. i was like that was fine with me i was like cool like i have no problem with that like he probably told me to edit one thing out and that was it i think the majority of people i think the majority of people once they like like for like if, if this is like for instance if this is someone that has reached out to you for your work usually it's because they like what you're doing and i think the cool thing about that is that usually not always but usually if they've reached out to you to hire you to do something it's because they like what you want to do and usually as long as you have open communication with that and you just say like like you've seen my work that's why you're here like if you like i can work with you and i'm gonna like if you have like if like for a video for instance if you don't want this shot in it because it, you think it makes you look fat, cool, we're ta we'll take it out. Like, you know what I mean? Like that little, <laughs> like that little detail yeah. or whatever. Like if you don't like the way that you looked at this person this way and you feel weird about this shot, okay, we'll replace it. That's fine. Like little things like that. Like we can work together on those things because maybe I thought it was okay, but because it's them and they're self-conscious about it, totally fine. Yeah. Like it's little, little things um, for the most part, like, People will trust your style, I think. 
not always usually it turns usually. out that way i think yeah. i think usually if you're just open about it be like we can work together on this but like just trust like just trust my style right like, um which i think is uh it's always really good when you have that kind of relationship um man there's a dude um i don't know if you've heard of mike d'amelia um he's a concert photographer he tours um if you haven't followed him i recommend following him he does photos and videos for tours and holy crap that man is a workhorse uh he did okay so he was on tour with this band called intervals um and he made every single day he made a three minute or like no it was like two minute he made a two minute um behind the scenes tour doc of the day that they were on that day that they were on tour for every day that went up on their instagram story of the of his instagram story the band's instagram story and all the members of the band's instagram stories and you could only see it for 24 hours so and but they just gave him like complete and total freedom because they trusted his style and like the work that he did and holy crap the results were just like beyond what anyone expected and i think that's like kind of the thing of like um i think that uh sometimes some it, it, when you have that vision of like something that you want to do and how you want it to turn out we, maybe you can make one or two minor changes but i think for the most part someone that knows what they're doing is gonna create what someone's looking for yeah no totally get, yeah i mean like I was, I was i had something i was gonna say and then like left my mind <laughs> yeah what was i gonna say um uh shit uh Come on, come on. It was in here. It's all good, man. <laughs> man. It was a really good point too I was gonna make. But like like for videography, like I don't know if you've ever had this where um uh like people think they like uh, maybe like it depends how many people you're working with, but especially like with uh people in bands, it's like they all come at you with different ideas. Mm -hmm. and, always and, yeah and, and each idea contradicts the other one yep and it's like yeah. it's like well, can you get like a more guitar in there or more drums yeah. and i'm like i was like i'm gonna get equal amounts you're all gonna, <laughs> you're all gonna get you know yep. the right amount and it's not gonna be one over the other <laughs> <laughs> but like and like so far i haven't run into that but like i've heard stories of like like some people just aren't ha like like if there's a four person band three people are happy but that one person's not happy or vice versa it's like it's like no one's ever really happy no yeah i get that yeah you know? but like have you ever taken have you ever done like a music video yet like have you done anything like that i have not done any formal music videos unfortunately i've wanted to and i've been trying to book one for a while uh i've done a fair amount of live videos for people um but no i haven't been able to actually do any music videos i am yeah trying to get in that mm, yeah because i've only done one and it was like very small but like mm -hmm. i was really proud with the way it turned out but uh my like and i think this is like my favorite thing about people when you especially when it's just like you doing the video and everything yeah it's like uh they have all these like intricate ideas for like shots Mm -hmm. and I, i'm just like dude that is not possible <laughs> yeah it's like like dude we can't do that <laughs> it's like we don't, we're not hollywood here like we don't got that kind yeah. of um time or equipment or any of that it's like mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna have to settle for uh uh just okay <laughs> for this yeah for, for and this there's, there's always times where like uh this was actually the same people that i i had that annoying edit 
thing that I was fighting with during the like shooting of the thing. I can't remember. I mean, it was so long ago that I can't remember exactly what it was. But they wanted something in like they wanted me to shoot something a, a specific way. Or they wanted something. I can't remember what it was. But there was the, I literally was just straight up with them. I was like, "You're only paying me five hundred dollars. I'm not doing that." Like, and I was just like, the the level of things. Oh, here's what oh, I remember now. What it was? They wanted a like. They wanted me to bring or rent like a like a live multi track recorder so that they could get like they could get like a the uh. So they could do individual recordings of each members during the show that they were playing so that we could then mix, like mix guitars, mix bass, mix vocals, and do like a, like a studio mix later. I was like, listen, if you want to pay me like $1,500 or $2,000, we'll figure it out. We'll, yeah. we'll do it. Like we'll work this out, but you're on a budget. So that's not happening. Like there's a level of like, knowing how much you're getting paid and what what that will give someone you know what i mean it's like yeah if someone's got the budget you know to pay me to rent a bunch of equipment and do all the stuff i'll do it i'll figure it out we'll work it out we'll make that awesome video yeah but yeah i'm not gonna do that if you're only gonna pay me a little bit of money like yeah yeah no like uh what was it uh i wasn't uh uh, quinceanera i don't know what the fuck it was now that i'm thinking about it but like, like, like a party I got, of some sort yeah and i got paid 800 which is pretty good but like i said i remember telling them i was like i was like i i promise you i'm gonna give you a video it's like but if i get the chance i'll, I'll try to get some photos because they didn't want to get an, like another photographer right so, so i, I yeah. turned in the i turned in the video and i maybe turned in five photos <laughs> Which is basically just like the family photo yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And, he's and like, they're disappointed about it. Yeah, they're like, I thought you said you were going to give us photos too. I was going to say, if I have the chance, yeah, I would give you photos. Yeah. It's like, I only had these five moments. It's like, mm -hmm. either you, you know, like, I still get paid the same either way. You didn't pay me for the, for the, um, you didn't pay me for the photos. So these are kind of just like, hey, I got these. Here you go. You know? Yeah. That's one of those things where I feel like, um, Man, I, I just like I sometimes I feel like people don't listen. You know, when you say shit like that, you're like, you're like, yeah, like, for instance, in that case, it's like, it's like, I'm here, like you were there as a videographer, like that was what you were there for. I'm assuming was yeah, as someone that was doing a video. It's like, I don't know. I feel like I don't feel like I don't feel like they have the right to be disappointed about that because like you told them that like maybe you turn in a few photos, but if the expectation as the client like the person that's paying you if the expectation was they're hiring you to make a video you did that yeah like you did what you were paid to do and uh yeah no i think sometimes people like don't understand um people just don't understand um how difficult sometimes some of those things can be like you know what i mean they just think oh clearly he can take photos and videos at the same time I, yeah i couldn't eat you know like because they just don't know enough from a technical standpoint from a um artistic standpoint from a logistic standpoint they don't understand what goes into making a video yeah uh and how much work that takes um oftentimes i don't know in some ways, I think it's more. It I in some ways I think it's more difficult than doing photography. I think it also depends on like, on. On the job, I think. Um, yeah. Like, my buddy that um, I was talking about, he has shot a few weddings before. He doesn't do too much of it, but he takes it whenever he needs the money. And there's definitely been some times where he's been like actually really pissed off because like the photographer there was like 
I don't know, paid like whatever, like six or seven grand or something for this wedding. And he got like three and he clearly did like four times more work than the photographer. <laughs> like, right. And it, but it just depends on the scenario. I think like, I'm sure there's photographers that would make that other photographer look bad. Mm. Um, but it just kind of depends on the job. Well, no, mm. like, like for the video, like for me, it was not only did I give them a video, but like I gave them a, good enough video because their lighting was so dark in there oh, okay and i was like i even went up to them i was like is there any way we can like bump up the lights or something like i don't know like do so because it was it was held in like a like this small hall yeah and they're like well if we bump up the lights there's no point for the, like the laser lights that are up there like by the stage and but the stage wasn't it like the they had like a, a live band there yeah but he wanted me to get footage of the, of the people that like mm, guys dancing and right i'm like well i can only get them from this one spot they yeah. all have to come in here and dance in this one spot because like if they veer out it's like it's all dark yes so i yeah. can't get them and it's like and so and plus they also like he wanted like i don't know what he wanted because like he's like film the whole thing i was like i'll film as much as i need to because the rest of it was just people eating. And I'm like, I'm not going to video. Yeah, no, that's just weird. <laughs> I'm not gonna, yeah, it's like, I'm not going to be able to take people eating. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to get the most important moments. And yeah. so I, like, I got the daughter, I got like the father daughter dance. I got, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the important stuff. But like, it was, it was the weirdest thing. I was like, do you really want me to video people eating? And he's like, mm why not i'm like no like it's like, weird it's weird like especially if there's only one person eating like i'm like it's just gonna be focused on them and it's like are you gonna like, slow slow cinematic shot of aunt cindy eating the cheesecake exactly like, i was like, like why <laughs> it's like why i know i was just like and then he's yeah. like oh can you can you get people arriving i'm like yeah i can do that and then like but then like i think for me the problem was like uh you can hear people's conversations and like there were some things said that i i'm pretty sure no one would uh like want in the video <laughs> no one would want in the video so well, like that's, that's why uh that's why uh the mute button exists and uh happy music in the background i don't know <laughs> that's what, well that's what i did i just i just like added some happy music at the end and it's like okay there we go like we fixed that but then uh he was just like well why does it sound like like it's live here but like there's like music that wasn't played here i was like it's like do you really want to know <laughs> like do you really want to know what was said <laughs> but like that's funny for, for me yeah like a lot of the trouble i've had is just with videography and people yeah like like you said like they they just don't listen to like anything i think with um I think that's because photo videos are just more involved in that with photos, it's like, it's just like you take the photos, you edit the photos and you run them over and either they really like them or they're like, eh. Yeah. Which is, oh, which always sucks when someone doesn't really like your photos. Um, it's so weird. I had one or two bands that hired me and they like, they know my shots. They see my shots. They know the work I do. And I did my stuff that I usually do for them. And they were like, well, and I was like, why did you hire me? Like, like what they ended up wanting, I was like, you could have hired a uh, Jim who's picking up a camera for the third time to do that. Like, why, why did you spend money on me? You've seen my work. You've seen what I do. Why are you surprised that I did what I usually do for you? Right. Like, yeah. Uh, well, and that always sucks, but like for video, it, because it's just so much more of a, a process there is a lot more window for them to be involved in the edit of it um because there are like it's more of a um it's more open-ended you know like there's room to change things um not just because in, in photo you know it's just a, that that moment is there and the only thing you can change is the style of the edit which is obviously that like if someone's like hey i wanted it to be more airy i'm like cool and you change that and then you, you give it back to them and they're like oh wow that looks great like that's cool 
and that's really the only realm of things you can change with photography but with videos because you often shoot more than goes into the video obviously you know i mean like you know a two minute video may have 30 minutes of footage behind it that no one sees yeah um and so like there is much a, lo- a much larger room to change things which i think is where you start to see like i don't know just people being dumb and annoying <laughs> the way- yeah nah i mean hopefully like i don't know like my 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 angle for for me one day i don't know is to either be a cinematographer or just be like a like a straight up writer okay so like i've used this cool. I, i've used this entire time just to like start writing some screenplays i was like that'd be cool it's like i wrote this or wrote that and then all of like all the people that i've met here in st louis like i was like if, if i wanted to we could all just come together and make a Dude, fucking we movie. could we could totally make a movie because <laughs> it's crazy like yeah we like, definitely have the people we have the people we, we have, have the, the resources people. like it's and my my thinking of it is because like I'm such a movie head is a I want to do like an appeal for a uh, tax what's it called not tax rebates uh tax incentives for people to come here and film because for some yes. Re- yes. For some reason yeah. yeah the governor or the guy like I don't know who who the fuck is in charge of it but like they're just not a, they're not giving tax incentives for uh for mm-hmm. the studios to come here and film it's and actually like, funny. Did you? I don't know if you've heard. Uh, so you know the show. Uh, it's the Netflix show. Uh, Ozark. Ozark, yeah. Which is obviously set in Missouri. Yep. Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, I don't know if you knew this. It's shot in Georgia. Yeah, everything's shot because, in Georgia. So here, here's the thing that's funny. So most people don't know this, like, but I, I'm kind of a film head too. Uh, Georgia is huge in terms of like. Uh, amount of tv specifically tv productions that shoot in georgia it seems like like you know hollywood is obviously the big movie place but in terms of like states in in the u.s that get a lot of tv i think georgia might actually be the largest in terms of like productions that go out to georgia to film and it's because of the tax incentives that they get from the state of georgia to like to write off so many things yeah um but the funny thing is I remember hearing about this, like they wanted to shoot at the Lake of the Ozarks, obviously, but the the Missouri governor wasn't going to give them any tax incentives or anything like that. And they did the budgeting and it was going to be cheaper for them to go to Georgia, build TV sets for their, their, for their production to basically replicate the Lake of the Ozarks in Georgia, it was going to be more, it was going to be less expensive to build all that stuff because of the tax incentives in Georgia would write off like so many things. Whereas in Missouri, they wouldn't have had to build anything. They would have gone into real world locations and it would have cost them more. (laughs) And I'm like, man, that's so, that's so fucked. Yeah. Well, I mean, like that just kind of pisses me off sometimes whenever I see a movie or anything. And uh, they're clearly in St. Louis, like the the setting is St. Louis, but you, you can clearly tell, like, oh, uh, green screen. Mm, that's just not St. Louis. Not St. Louis. Random highway. You're just saying, like, oh, it's St. Louis. And obviously, they're allowed to get like aerial shots of like the arch, which is all they get. And I remember it. hearing that there was a recent Netflix. I think it was a Netflix movie or a Netflix show that was actually done by someone in St. Louis, but I can't remember what it was called. I'd have to look it up and get it back to you later. Oh, yes. I I saw a news article about it on local news about it because it was, like, actually shot in St. Louis. Yeah. Because it was a local dude that's, like, born and raised in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Um, I can't remember what it was called, though. I could look it up. I know what you're talking about because I I think I read the same thing, but, like, I'm trying to think – like of course, like you and me, we can like film stuff here and like, but like, we don't have a budget like a movie, so it's no, like, we don't. <laughs> of, course, of course, they don't give a fuck about it. Like no, like, of course. What you want to shoot down the street? Why not? Like 
Yeah. You know, but yeah, like that's kind of my thing is like, I hope one day we can do something so we can get more film productions here. I think that'd be really cool. I think that'd be good. Because A, I don't like uh, Cal- uh, eh, California. I like it in small doses. But, <laughs> but, but like, I, I just don't like when I go there, I don't like the vibe. I don't like, I don't even like New York. Like there's like, for some reason there's like, and I don't know if, if you've ever been to any of them, but like. Uh, I went to LA once, but not New York. No, nah, there's like this pretentiousness about both cities. Yeah. Like, I can't explain it. And uh, I was talking to this guy who's from New York and he's like, uh, I was talking to him. I was like, dude, like, you know, I was like, you know, New York sucks, right? He's like, bro. All New Yorkers know that New York sucks. He's like, he's like, you know who doesn't think New York sucks? Uh, people who fantasize about moving to New York. <laughs> I was, he was like, he's like, so funny. <laughs> he's like, New York is a fucking dump uh, <laughs> of an island. I was like, I was but like, they just pretend it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah, they pretend. It. They're like, oh, what was it? He was like, he's like, dude, there's trash everywhere. It smells. I was like, I was like, I don't know why you guys think it's awesome to move there. Like, I was like, I, I don't want to move there. <laughs> and then, uh, I have fun co- paying like eight times more than we're paying now for rent. Exactly. And then my cousin, he lives in, L- he lives in California. He lives like an hour from LA, mm-hmm. but he's like, I was like, when I was thinking of moving there back when I was naive and shit, he was like, dude, do not come here. He's like, dude, he's like, just stay away, man. <laughs> like, stay away, man. He's like, I'm trying to get out of here. I'm like, dude, like, don't you love this place? He's like, that's so funny. He's like, dude, like, you're, you're, he's like, the only people that love LA are people who live like in the Midwest or like people that don't live here. It's like everyone else who actually lives here and was born here, they're trying to get the fuck out. Like, yeah. Like the tax and shit up there, they're like, nah, man. I was like, I'm trying to get out. He's like, if you got any room in Missouri, I'll go there. <laughs> I was like, if you want to move to Missouri, man. It's and cheap. so it's, it's real cheap. cheap. It's real cheap. Plus, I don't know if you know it, but like it is uh it is much easier to uh start a startup here and to oh, actually yeah. and to build a company yeah. rather than go going out to California and trying to like make a business because like everyone has the same business out there like it's not that hard yeah that's the thing i think like obviously we're a smaller city i think i think the what you could argue you could argue obviously smaller city less work i would make the argument that i think that there's in reality there's more work because there's fewer people fighting for it yeah like, if you're in L.A., like, if I was trying to make it as a photographer and a videographer in L.A., I think I would flop so hard because just, like, there are thousands of other people trying to do the exact same thing you are, and the chances of, of like, half of them being better than you are pretty high, whereas here yeah. it's, like, I mean, there's, there's probably, what, a few thousand photographers in, say, in St. Louis total? I'd say a, maybe. I'd say maybe hundreds. I can't, I mean, I, like, I don't think, uh, it'd be in terms of like, prof- okay. In terms of like professional photographer, videographers. Yeah. You're probably right. You're yeah. probably right. In terms of like people that put out really, really good work on a regular basis. Yeah. It's probably like a few hundred or like yeah. maybe a thousand, but like if you're in LA, man, there's probably like 50,000 photographers or something like that, or, you know, or people that at least consider themselves to be like the the pool of people trying to do it is way bigger than the amount of work. Whereas here, yeah, we don't have Hollywood. Yeah. We don't have all these crazy stuff going on, but like, I think there's more work than there are people to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, uh, that's my thought process too. has been, especially getting older. It was just kind of realizing it's like, uh, why would I want to move? The LA or New York where obviously that's where like a majority of like the stuff that you'll want to do is but it's mm-hmm. like the the I, I guess the what's the word the chances of you doing it professionally or with it, with a steady income are a lot lower yeah I would say so than if you were to do it here and so it's like I uh, think so like I always tell people it's like just do your homework 
be smart about those decisions and like it's like if you want to move out there for the right reasons go for it but if you're just going out there saying that you're gonna do it for uh uh you want to build a career or whatever but you just want to party just say you want to party man like there's, there's yeah, no shame right there's, there's no shame right in that. just say you want to party don't be right. like i, I want to go out there to be a you know whatever it's just like, be yeah. honest about it just be honest man just be honest yeah like i'm not judging you just say i want to fuck around just yeah, yeah. you know yeah but uh but yeah like i think i think st louis is like a pretty good uh like group of like creatives i like i don't think like i swear to god like if we all just came together for like a big project i don't know what it would be but like i think i think the biggest issue would be making sure (laughs) that people like stay in their lane yeah i think we'd have so many people that are like like you'd have to you'd have to be very organized about like if you're gonna set like if you were gonna set up a production like this person is the director this person is the writer this person is the like gonna be our camera operator this person is gonna be our cinematographer like this person is gonna be our audio guy and make sure that people stay in that lane because you're gonna have a billion people that think they want to be the camera operator and they're gonna be like no i can do it but like no you're the writer fuck off (laughs) like I think that would be the biggest issue is making sure that people like, like stay in their lane. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, definitely. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a big dreamer. I'm. Hey, I'm nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But, um, I guess before I let you go here, do you got any, like, uh, you said you had like maybe a couple projects coming up. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll see what happens. All right. And uh, why don't you just plug your uh, Instagram? Do you have a Facebook or anything? Uh, technically, but uh, I don't update it enough, and it's it's not my main mean of stuff. So my Instagram is steverosen.media, uh, and that's where I really do the most of my posting and, and outreach. Mm, cool, man. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to me, man. Of course, man. All right, man, you take care. You too.